Okay. Oh, good morning. <laughs> Sorry. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It is Lady Victoria on um, this morning. I am your etiquette educator and your worthy life coach. Broadcasting to you live this morning from the Great Windy City of Chicago. Chi Town is what we like to call it. We are the best in the Midwest, and we're very happy to have you be a part of our platform on this morning. And welcome to Tidbit Tuesdays, where we offer uh, a little bit of information. And across both of my platforms, Tidbit Tuesdays um, is where we offer a solution to your various life and dilemmas. So come on in on this morning. Come on in. It's the second day of the business week. Tuesday it is. And uh, please like and share across your various social media platforms. And also invite those, good morning, invite um, your viewers to this broadcast on this morning. I hope that everyone is having a good day. It's a little gray here in the shy on this morning. But, hey, it's spring and we're going to get through this. So I'm going to jump right into our uh, content on this morning. This, was, this one is entitled Ambassadors, Kingship, and the Blood. There are so many things going on in the world today at the helm of everything and at the head of everything is the COVID-19 virus that is going around. I really don't want to spend a lot of time talking about the virus. Uh, that's not really my focus, but I really want to focus on where we are, especially um, those that are in the brotherhood, those that are part of the family, those that are part of the body of Christ. Where are we this morning? And what is the message that we are saying, that we are displaying? What is it that we're projecting onto others that are around us? Are we living in fear? Are we fearful about this virus? Are we wondering what's going to happen to us and our loved ones? And I understand that there is a measure of that that is existing in us as human beings. But also, as people of faith, the Bible tells us that we should have no fear. And, you know, it, it can be hard dealing with something like this that's really a pandemic that is uh, not just sweeping across our nation, but sweeping across the entire globe where people are dying every day. And the focus group that they said that the virus was attached to, good morning, and that uh, the focus group of people that they said that it was attached to and that they were the main focus were finding out that that is not the case because you have other delimits. Uh, great morning to you as well. We have um, other demographics that are falling victim to this virus. And if ever there is a time and a need for prayer, we need to be on our knees before the Lord always in this situation. Second Timothy 1 and 7 tells us, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. And if we have our faith and our hope and our trust and belief is in Jesus Christ, then what are we afraid of? If we truly believe, that God has our back, as we oftentimes say, we speak the church lingo all the time. We speak scripture lingo all the time. But are we living up to what we say we believe in? Do we really believe that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper? And that every tongue that shall rise up against us in judgment that thou shalt condemn it? Because we know that this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and our righteousness is of the Lord Jesus Christ. We talk that. We quote that scripture all of the time. But do we really believe it? Do we really, really believe that we shall escape this pandemic? Do we really believe that we are the salt of the earth and that we are life in this earth? Do we really believe that we are kings and priests and that we are ambassadors in this earthly realm? Good morning. Thank you for joining. Do we really believe that we are ambassadors in this earthly realm and that we are assigned to specific purposes? here while we are journeying through in the earthly realm as kingdom ambassadors we have to realize that we have diplomatic immunity and there is nothing that any other country any other nation anything in this earthly realm can do us any harm we have to remember that in the beginning of the book that in genesis that god gave us dominion over everything in the earth realm and so why are we afraid? Why are we not on our post? Why are we not praying? Why are we not representing the kingdom for what it really is? Why are we lining up 
with those that are not a part of the body of Christ? Why are we cowering in fear? Why are we running and hiding? Why are we in a state of panic? That is not our portion. That is not our portion. And I can sit here this morning and honestly tell you that I have no fear of the coronavirus. And if you really look at this thing, it's not so much the virus that is the problem, but again, it is the fear of the people that has become the problem, that has become the issue. And so while the government is creating all of this stuff and stirring up everything globally across the world, I believe that it is a test. It is a test of our faith. It is a test of our belief system. The government wants to see how far they can go, how much can they push the envelope to get the people in a state of panic so that our eyes are not focused on what the real issue is. Because with all of this going on, life as we have known it, life as we have known it is going to become a thing of the past. When all of this settles down and when it kind of goes away, then they will be able to implement the other things in place. Put them in place across the globe that's going to change the face of the world, not just America, but change the face of the world. Good morning. Thank you for joining the broadcast. And so, are we praying about that? Are we interceding on behalf of others? Amen. Are we interceding on behalf of others? Are we praying against those things that's going to be terrible for those that have no belief in Christ? Are we praying for and interceding for those that God has given us that we are assigned to pray for? That we are assigned to stand in the gap for? Are we doing that? Do, do we realize who we are or have we forgotten that we are kings and priests and that we are ambassadors in this earthly realm that is not our home, but we have to be focused on our assignment. We have to be focused on our purpose in this earthly realm, just like ambassadors of the United States, okay? An ambassador for the United States lives in another country. They live at the American Embassy in the country that they are assigned to. In that country, they have things that they have to do. They have assignments that they have to carry out. They're oftentimes stationed there for a period of time, let's say about three years or so, that they are assigned to that country. And while they're there, they are to uh, represent the American citizens that live in that country. They are to be the voice for the American citizens that live in that country. They are to carry out the assignment that is given to them, that is mandated to them by those that have authority and the rule of them over them. So we, if we are kingdom ambassadors from heaven, sent here to earth, God is the one who we report to. And he has given us an assignment to do in this earthly realm. Are we carrying it out? Are we standing on our faith? Are we representing heaven as it is? Because we have a mandate to bring heaven here to earth, that will be done in heaven as it is. In the earth realm as it is in heaven. You all excuse me this morning if I'm a little bit emotional. But I just, I'm just looking around and I'm just seeing the fear in the faces of people. You go to the grocery store and it's packed. You know, the aisles are all the way, the lines are all the way down the aisle. And people are there just buying up everything and purchasing everything and hoarding everything. This is all based on fear. Fear gets a reaction out of you oftentimes that isn't logical. We overthink the situation and we find ourselves doing things that we normally would not do. But as kingdom ambassadors, again, we have a responsibility in this earthly realm. So, as ambassadors, I said, when you're living an ambassador and you live in a foreign country, 
This earthly realm is our foreign country. We're sent from heaven. We have our assignment to do. Ambassadors might attend and host various events that are going on in the country to which they are assigned. They give speeches and meet with the country's leaders. Their goal is to improve relationships between their home country and the country where they are posted. So that same mandate is given to us as kingdom ambassadors. We are to improve the relationships here in the earthly realm. How do we do that? By witnessing, by being an example, by preaching and teaching the word of God, by sharing it with those that are not a part of the body, by carrying out the assignment and the purpose that God has given us to do here in this earthly realm. Have we forgotten that while we are here, this is what we are called to do in this season with all of this that is going on? Have we forgotten to apply the blood covering over our families, over our children, over our work environments? Because see, we as saints, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. But while we are here, we have to carry out the mandate that God has given us. Applying the blood over the doorposts for everyone in our household. Your household in this season is not just the place where you live. It's not just the place where you reside. You can be your work environment. Whatever realm that you are assigned to. And it can be home, of course. Even in your churches. But what are you assigned to in the marketplace? Your assignment in the marketplace, you might be the only salvation that someone sees. So are you applying the blood in your work environment? Whether you work in the entertainment industry, whether you whatever industry it is that you work in, entertainment, business, banking, um, retail, wherever it is that you are assigned, where you have a sphere of influence, that is your place. Have you applied the blood to the doorposts so that when the wrath comes, God will pass over? We know this story in Exodus. Exodus 12 and 7. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token or for a sign upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Have we applied the doorposts where we are? Have we applied the blood to the doorposts of where we are? Others can be saved and brought into the kingdom by our intercession. As intercessors, we are interrupters or disruptors of the enemy's plan. Right? For some that are not a part of the body, they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. So you say they already belong to the enemy. He has, doesn't have to do anything to them because he's already their father. This in and of itself is true. But maybe that's their temporary position. They're supposed to be a part of the kingdom. But as an ambassador, are you commissioned? Are you assigned to them to witness to them, to bring them aboard, to bring them across? If 
you don't, then that blood is required at your hand. And I don't want any blood required at my hand. I don't want to stand before the Lord. And he says, you say that you love me, but you did not obey me. I don't want that to be my portion. So in this time and in this season, it is time for us to rise up, people of God. It is time for us to rise up and to speak up and to say something. We are to be salt and light in this earthly realm. And we should be the driving force against the coronavirus, against the fear, against the pandemic that's going on. I call it a pandemic and a pandemic because it's a pandemic because everybody is panicking and wondering what in the world is going on. And some people should be afraid, rightly so. I had a classmate of mine that posted on last week that um, she caught the virus. That she had the virus. She was lying in a hospital bed wondering if she was going to die from this. Couldn't get her breath and they weren't getting her the meds quick enough. Well, thank God she survived. She is a believer. She survived and she's home and getting better and better and stronger every day. Thank and praise God for that. But what are we doing? What are we doing? Are we carrying it out? Are we acting out who we really are? Have we forgotten that as ambassadors, we do, we have diplomatic immunity. That means that we don't have to be fearful. If we have diplomatic immunity, that means that we are exempt from some things. We don't have to walk around and be afraid that this virus is going to take us out. We do have to be diligent. We do have to be, I mean, it's practical to be in a state of preparedness. So, yes, you should have your water. You should have your um, dry goods and your canned goods. You should have your hand sanitizer and your various cleaners and all of that. We should be washing our hands. Aren't these things that we do on a regular basis all the time? Well, even if we don't, even if we don't, we should be doing them. And we should be exercising extreme caution. I get it. I understand. I'm not saying that we just walk around being foolish. No, I don't mean that at all. We have to be in a state of preparedness and be aware of what's going on. You know, we should be keeping abreast of what's going on, especially in your state. You know, here in Illinois, we are on a, a stay-at-home, stay-at-home orders. I think that came down on last, what was it, last Thursday? Last Thursday or Friday, um, the Gov Governor Pritzker announced that, you know, we would be on the 14th day. So that would be until April the 7th. Um, that's when things should be lifted for us. That's what we're expecting and anticipating. Um, but what if it doesn't? And either way, again, we still have to be on our post. So I wanted to come on and just share and just encourage you and remind you of who you are and whose you are and remind you that you do have an assignment. We all do. In this season, we have an assignment, and that assignment is to pray is to pray that assignment is to intercede that assignment is to come alongside others and encourage them that assignment is to um, speak to the non-believer this is a great time for witnessing i'm not saying beat anybody over the head you do as the holy spirit leads you to do and whatever it is that he is telling you to do whatever it is that he is encouraging you to do it's time to do that in that season it's time to cover those that are assigned to us as never before this is not going to change and everything go back to normal. This is not that. This is not the end, but this is definitely the beginning of a new normal that we're all going to have to adjust to. So are we prepared for that? While we buying up water and hand sanitizer and uh, the Clorox wipes, you know, while we're doing all of that and while we're storing up food and all of that, what do we have going on in our inner being? How are we preparing our soul man? What are we doing about that? What are we doing about our soul, man? Are we exercising our mind, will, imagination, our intellect, and our emotions in a spiritual sense? Are we pulling and bombarding heaven as never before? Are we carrying out the various assignments that God has told us to do? I know there are some things, even in the business realm, that God has told me to do that I'm working on, that I have to complete. 
because we don't know what's coming behind this, but we do know that something is coming. I remember when the Holy Spirit spoke to me back in 2005, um, not 2005, 2015, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. I had just recently moved back from Texas at that time, and my mom had already passed away. I moved back home to take care of my mom when she was sick. And um, after my mom had passed away, I ended up just staying here um, in Chicago. And I was minding my, my business one morning. I had gotten up and I had said that there were some things that I was going to do. And I was already in my uh, personal prayer and meditation. Good morning. Thank you for joining this morning. Already in my personal prayer and meditation time. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, clear as day. There is something coming. There is something coming. It is unavoidable. It has to happen. It will happen. It must come. He said, but you are to tell. And at that time, that message, good morning. Thank you for joining the broadcast. At that time, he was telling me that the message was for my family. Not just my immediate family, but my extended family, cousins and aunts and uncles. And he told me that there was something coming. And he said, you tell them to get ready. You tell them to do exactly what I say do. Only those that do exactly what I say do will come out of this and will be saved. Salvation in that instance, uh, saved in that instance, didn't just mean salvation, but it meant that they would be saved from the, this, this dilemma. And so out of obedience, I obeyed the Lord. I obeyed the Holy Spirit, and I spoke with my family, and I told them what they said the Lord at that time. And he also told me, this thing that's coming, it's not preventable. He said, you can't pray anybody out. You can't fast anybody out. But every man has to stand on his own, and they have to do what he was telling them to do. So I delivered the message, and in recent months, that same message came back to me, and I began to pray for my family and intercede on their behalf. And he told me, this is an extended message. This is no longer just to your family, but this is to everyone. This is to everyone. And what the Lord said then, he said the same thing now. So we as a people, this is our time to rise up. This is our time to speak up. This is our time to yell it from the housetops. This is our time as intercessors, as watchmen on the walls. This is our time as sentinels to go forth, cry aloud, and spare not. This is the season that God has been preparing you for. And so if you feel a little bit maladjusted, <laughs> if you feel a little bit fearful, if you feel like you know, what in the world is going on, don't take that as a sign of this is something that I'm not supposed to do. This is something that I'm not supposed to be a part of. Don't take that as a, well, I'm afraid so I can't do it. No, no, no. Take this as the push of God to move you into action, to move you forward, to release what he is giving you. Open your mouth. Your vocal cords need to be loosed so that you can speak up, so that you can do what God has called you to do in this time because he's given each one of us something to do. I didn't want to come up and share this message this morning. <sighs> of my own will and accord. No, I didn't want to. But I know that this is what the Holy Spirit has called me to do. And so I'm here doing it. Gal. For those that receive it, amen. For those that don't, think about it again. It's not just Lady Victoria speaking. It's not me. But as his vessel, as his mouthpiece, I'm speaking this morning. And it is not of my own accord. Those of you that follow me regularly, you know I'm not on here a lot of time preaching messages and saying, Thus said the Lord, and He said this, and Thus said the Lord, and He said that. That's not my usual MO. But the time when the Holy Spirit unctions me to speak, I do. And this is one of those times. So let's come together as a body of people. 
And those of you that he's given assignments to, I know he's doing it because of what he's already said. So don't be afraid. Don't hold back. This is the time in this season to be like Esther. To have the Esther anointing upon you. To come forth. And to save the people. To save a nation. So you see, well, Lady Victoria, are you saying that I'm supposed to save the world? <laughs> yes. You are. Your world are those that God has assigned to you. Those that you are called to, to minister to, to pour into, to, to pour into some, to take by the hand and to lead and to guide. And as you do unto others, others will be there to support and undergird you. The Holy Spirit is the greatest teacher that we all have. And so we can receive no greater instructions than to receive them directly from the throne. So I implore you on this morning to not focus on the virus, to not focus on the pandemic, but to pray and to intercede as God has led you to. This is the time to gather together with those that are within your sphere of influence. Some of you, it is on your job. Some of you, it is in the area and the arena where you work, where you will be called to action. Some of you, this is how your business, this is how your enterprise is going to um, flourish. We all know that in times of panic and in times of uh, desperation, in situations like this, in times of famine, in times of drought, in times of trouble like this, a birthing occurs. There is a death and then a birthing occurs. In the birthing, new things emerge. New laws are passed. New jobs are created. New businesses are born. Because out of the ashes, we rise to the opportunity to learn how to know to do things differently. We rise to the opportunity of um, creating new things. New things that work in the new system that is going to come out of the tragedy that took place and so there will be new systems this time around there will be new things that will happen and out of this because of this we will learn how to readjust okay um, for us spiritually we will learn again how to pray we will learn again how to fast we will learn how to return to our first love we will learn how to be more obedient to the word of God and to the things that he has implanted already within us because it's already within you. You already have the power within you to carry out what it is he is telling you to do. So you say, well, I'm called to this. Yes, you are. And now you're called to it on a different level. It's different. But it's not above your ability to do it because the spirit of God that lives and dwells in you is your leader and your guide. The Spirit of God that lives and dwells in you is the same one that took you by the hand before and led you through whatever situation you were in before. And now he's taking us higher. He's taking us higher. This is to those that will listen and obey. This is to those that will listen and obey. Don't be caught outside of God's will for you. In this time, this is not the time to shy away. This is not the time to back down. But this is the time to stand up, to speak up, to rise up. Be an ambassador. You already are. Carry out the duties and the responsibilities of an ambassador. Okay? Some of your... Um, Duties will be different from time to time, but your goal and your purpose remains the same. Getting there, you will have to carry out various functions, okay? Um, 
being an ambassador is similar to like being a CEO of a company. You have to have strong leadership, interpersonal skills, and all of that. So this is not the time to think that you are not equipped and that you're not qualified. You're already qualified. You're already equipped. You just have to go for it. Don't be afraid because it is already in you. It was in you from the beginning. Like Esther, it was in her from the beginning to be queen. She didn't become queen right away. She wasn't born into it. But that doesn't, didn't mean that that wasn't her assignment. It was. And so she had to prepare. And so whatever it is that you've been going through in recent months or years, whatever it is that you've been going through in this season, that season is now coming to an end. As you have been purified, as you have been eradicated from the things that um, you can't carry with you into this assignment. God has already purged, okay? And so let that be finalized. Continue and let it be finalized. Let those things be swept away. Those things that no longer serve. Take off the old grave clothes. You can't enter into this new season wearing the things of the past. You can't enter into this new season under the anointing that you once operated under. The anointing is calling us higher. So let's go there. Let's be on our post and be on our guard. Well. Yes, it is time now. It is time now. So let's rise up to the occasion. Let's come forth as the Holy Spirit has called us to do. Let's stand up as an ambassadors, as kings and priests. Let's apply the blood to the doorposts of your home. Apply the blood to the doorposts of your heart. Let the blood come in and cleanse and purge. Let the blood do its every function so that in this season, the season of blood will pass over and you'll be spared. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's Lady Victoria this morning coming on again to, uh, to uh, encourage you and just share what the Lord put on my heart and laid on my heart. So please, again, like and share across your various social media platforms. Um, those of you that subscribe to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll be able to get this video. I've been having some problems uploading to YouTube um, in the past couple of weeks or so. So, but you can always catch it here. I don't take my I don't take my episodes down, so it will always be here on Tuesday, Tuesday. Please like and share across your social media platforms. Um, share with others. I greatly appreciate that. I greatly yeah, I greatly appreciate you doing that. So this is Lady Victoria. Just sharing. Until the next time, we'll chat again. Bye for now.